Ranking Rec Room Originals. As someone who's played the game for over two years, I think I'm a bit of an expert. And also, if you disagree with anything on this list, I have something for you. First on the list is Disc Golf, and this has so much wasted potential, it's absolutely frustrating. The game has a built-in cheating method. All you have to do is put the disc inside the cart, and then you get crazy low scores, which I think is the dumbest thing ever, because then there's no incentive to play it the right way. Not to mention, if you're in a lobby full of randos, you have to wait for them to take their turn before you can move on to the next hole. So if someone's not paying attention, the whole game has to wait for them. So that's really frustrating. I'm gonna go ahead and give this D tier, but it could be B tier, possibly even A tier rec room if you did two simple things. Number one, remove the car, it ruins the game. Number two being maybe like a turn-based timer so that people have to finish each round in a certain amount of time. Otherwise they're kicked out, and that way the whole lobby doesn't have to wait on one person who's AFK. Next up is Disc Golf Propulsion which has the same problems as original disc golf. I will say it's a little more fun. I love the mechanics of the blowing wind and all of that. I'm gonna give it a C tier, but yes, same feedback as the last one. Now this one's interesting. I think this might be my first controversial take on this list. Dodgeball has a lot of good things going for it. Very straightforward, very intuitive. Rounds can sometimes be fast, but there are a few major problems. I think it's a little too easy to camp in the back row. You know, if someone's all the way back, it's really hard to hit them and the game might last forever. Some simple suggestions. Whoever has the most players left after a minute wins the round. That way if a team's losing, they're not gonna camp on the back. They're gonna try and actively get back in the game. Another suggestion might be to have a swarm-like mechanic where as the round goes on, the field gets tighter and tighter. That way you're forced to eventually hit the other people. But for that reason, dodgeball, you're getting C tier also. Golden Trophy, Rec Room's first quest. This one's an absolute banger. It has lots of weapons, it's a very straightforward story, and tons of replayability. I'm gonna give it A tier. Amazing job. Next up, we have Crimson Cauldron, and this is a great sequel to the original Golden Trophy. It introduces a few new weapons, it introduces a mini boss, the iconic Bog Monster. Overall, a great sequel. We'll also give this A tier. Next quest we have is Isle of the Lost Skulls, and you're gonna notice a pretty consistent pattern with my rankings. New weapons, new bosses, new theme, easy A tier. Laser Tag. It has a lot of good things going for it. I do love the bots, they do add some variety to the game. I like how there's player kills, hero kills, the colors are wonderful, the maps are great, the weapons are unique, but it only has two maps. Maps. I think a simple solution here would be for Rec Room to start using community-made laser tag maps. For example, they could have a Rec Room building contest, and the top three maps could be added to the actual Rec Room original and their rotation of maps you could play on. But since there's a lack of variety, you only get B tier. Lounge. So when Rec Room first started, this probably had a point to it. A cool, cozy hangout space. But now player-created clubhouses are a million times cooler than this, so it's pretty much irrelevant. Rec Room could delete this and nobody would notice. Mmm. Yeah. Paddle ball. This is another one that really f***ing frustrates me. It's so close to being good. It's so close. And with a few minor tweaks, it could be amazing. But here's the problem. When played correctly, this is easily A tier. Absolute blast. Fast paced. Good rewards. Nice competition. But for some reason, players are allowed to grab the ball. Which is, why, why do you allow that? Just get rid of it, get rid of it. Whenever I play this game, I either have a blast or I'm matched with a player who picks up the ball, runs to the halfway line, and then just throws it 87 miles an hour. This game could be A tier, but because of the easy exploit and rule breaking, it has to go in D. The game's broken, and unless you're in a private lobby with friends who follow the rules, it just sucks. It's, it's, ah. Uh. Oh, please fix it. Please make the ball ungrabbable. Crescendo. I'm gonna get a lot of hatred for this, but I have to keep the video honest. It's a very high quality quest. Lots of fun if you can play it, but you can't play it on the quest and you can't overlook that. Rec Room is a VR game and you can't play this on the most popular VR headset. I know it's easy for me to sit here and be like, oh yeah, just put it on the Quest 2, it's easy. I get it, I know there's limitations, I know it's difficult, but if you can't even play this in VR, huge deal, C tier. Next up, we have 3D Shrades. Fun game, simple rules, great way to learn the Maker Pen. We'll give you B tier. Park. At first glance, it seems like an easy F tier, but only a true idiot would rank it F tier. One thing people don't understand is that park has culture. You don't go to the park to simply walk around. You go to the park to be a degenerate. Every time I spawn in here, there's pictures the size of Mars, people spamming their sound pads. And there's usually a few people crying in the corner, which is like, you know, you win some, you lose some, but overall park gets C tier. Oh, but chubby or snail, you ranked park as good as Crescendo. <laughs> Next up, we have the tutorial. A lot of people hate this, myself included, but it does serve a good purpose. When people play the game, we want them to actually know how to control the game, so it kind of makes sense. But it's really annoying when you make an alt account and you're forced to walk through this whole thing. I'm gonna give it D tier because it's necessary, but Rec Room, could you please implement a skip button? It's super simple, it lets experienced players go through it really fast, and then it's win-win for everyone. Thank you, smash like. Bowling is another map that could be great, but 
dude. They messed it up. One of the greatest games of all time, Wii Sports absolutely nailed bowling. So I wish Rec Room would, you know, like, draw some inspiration from it. Similar to disc golf, if one person chooses to not take their turn, the entire game is ruined. I think an easy fix could be if they had like a timer, like, okay, it's your turn, you have 10 seconds to roll. Another helpful feature might be, if it's your turn, you're teleported to the bowling lane, ball's in your hand, all you have to do is roll. I think this would make the gameplay a lot better. One feature that bowling got really right though, was having the dude sweater, which is like a one in 250 exclusive item. It makes grinding bowling a little bit fun, but since multiplayer sucks, you're effectively grinding on your own. I wish other Rec Room originals had items that were as rare as this. Overall though, bowling is D tier. Next up, we have the Rec Center. I know a lot of people are gonna complain and be like, oh, there's nothing in the Rec Center. It's a horrible Rec Room original. This has to be F tier. Wrong! Let's think about it for a second. Anytime you hop on the game, you could visit the Rec Center and make 20 new friends. It is the greatest pastime in the entire game. A staple of Rec Room culture. I won't hear any Rec Center slander. Easy A tier. Next up we have Rec Rally, and ugh, I think you guys know where this is going. I want to compliment Rec Room for a lot of things they did here. They implemented the seating mechanic, they added in-game cars, all of this was a huge deal and has greatly helped builders, but I think they really missed the mark with Rec Rally. The laps are enormous, the rounds can last like 15 minutes, and also once someone's in the lead, it's basically impossible to catch them. It's not like Mario Party where you can throw stars at first place and level the playing field. It's basically as soon as someone gets in first, which takes 30 seconds, they are in first for the next Next 15 minutes. Not to mention motion sickness, which is not Rec Room's fault, but it's hard to play. I'm giving Rec Rally the first F tier, but I have the following suggestions. Shorten the map size significantly, make a few more small maps, and then create some sort of item system where you can help out the people who are further behind. Next up, we have Fortnite Rec Royale, and this is probably the best Rec Room original. Tons of replayability, tons of strategy, and geez, I almost feel like someone can make an entire game based off just this concept. In all seriousness, this is a blast. Rec Royale is the first S tier on the list. Woo! Remember, if you disagree, <laughs> soccer. If you know me, you know how badly I want to put this in the S tier. Soccer has a bad reputation because I think it used to be just f***ing terrible. The in-game physics used to suck, so you'd swing at the ball and it would just f***ing go backwards. And now I think the game's dead because of that. Modern day soccer's fun, physics are much improved, lots of replayability, and uh, we're giving it B tier. Smash like. Next up is Paintball, which is, uh, it's, it's just amazing. Fun game mode, super easy to pick up. They have what, like six maps? This is what laser tag could be if they refined it a bit more. We're going S tier. Next up is Stunt Runner. I don't know why I saying that. I just felt like it. They even have the fun stunt runner hair to unlock, which is super cool, just like the dude sweater. But there's such a huge learning curve and it just doesn't lend itself for multiplayer. For example, if you're super good at the game, you won't want to play with others. You'll finish each round in 30 seconds and then have to wait three minutes for everyone else to be done. On a similar note, if you're bad at the game, it's hard to learn how to get better when you're in multiplayer. People will get infinitely further ahead than you. And before you know it, you'll be alone in the back. Unless you go out of your way to study the shortcuts, which could take weeks to master, it's just not a fun game. I'm going D tier with it. I doubt Rec Room will fix this one, it's a bit old. A quick suggestion to improve it would be to let players select what level they start on. That way they could at least practice a little easier. Next up we have Jumbotron. It's an awesome quest theme. It's pretty difficult, but with the other quests, that's okay. Jumbotron belongs in A tier with its other quest brothers. Last but not least, we have the newest Rec Room original, Showdown. It came out this week and it has a lot going for it. The games are fast paced, only four minutes long. The map is pretty small, which encourages a lot of shooting action and it introduced a lot of cool weapons. I'm having an absolute blast of it so far, haven't gotten bored yet. The one red flag is that there's only one map right now. And if they added a few more, this could easily be A tier, maybe even S tier, but for now I think it belongs comfortably in the B section. So, this is the definitive Rec Room original tier list. Learn to know it, learn to love it. If you disagree for some reason, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and remember, stay chubby. Grrr.